girl hey it's diamond lachey here and i'm back with another video today's video we are continuing with the slay of the week series i'm super excited for today's girl boss y'all she is a friend and so much more and her story is gonna have you on the edge of your seat because she is so persistent so driven so hard working and i'm so so happy to have her here today without further ado allow me to introduce you to Brittany clark Today we got here Brittany Clark who is the owner of Banks Beauty Boutique. She's a CAU alumna and so much more. Brittany, who are you? Tell people who you are. Hi guys, I'm Brittany Clark but I go by Brittany Banks. Um, I recently relaunched my luxury hair extension brand called Banks Beauty Boutique. <laughs> Me in a nutshell. So if you had to describe yourself by one word, what would it be? Bold. Okay, okay. So you started Banks Booty Boutique back in 2018, and then you decided to relaunch this year. What made you start a hair company in your junior year of college? I always had a passion for hair. I loved hair. I always loved extensions and wigs and different colors and things. And I always felt as though it was always hard for me to get a great experience from other hair companies. Okay. So I thought, why not show the beauty, the beauty world a way to get a great experience? And why not just start my own hair company? Yes, yes. Okay, so why Banks Beauty Boutique? Walk us through you picking a name. I know finding a name that connects with you is kind of hard. So how did you know that that was the right name for you? Um. Well, like I said, I go by Brittany Banks. So Banks was just easy to come up with. And at first it was Banks Hair Boutique. And what changed from Banks Hair Boutique to Banks Beauty Boutique? I didn't want to narrow myself to just selling hair. When I look down the line in the next five to ten years, I'll see myself as a beauty influencer. Okay. So therefore, I wanted to make sure my horizons was as open as I can be. So just selling hair will just narrow me down into the hair industry versus just broadening my horizons and getting into the entire beauty industry. Yes. yes. Okay, so you categorize your hair company as a luxury hair extensions company. What makes Banks Beauty Boutique uh, luxury? The experience that you get while shopping with Banks Hair Boutique, the packaging process. When females open their hair, I want them to feel like a boss. I want them to feel bold. I want them to feel beautiful. Because, yes, hair may not make you, but experience will. Experience will have retention of customers and retention of company growth. Yes. Okay, so let's take it back. Because I feel like every entrepreneur has an entrepreneurial spirit as a child. So as a kid, what is one thing that you think made you the entrepreneur that you are today? I was always ambitious and always aspiring to do more and learn more. Um, okay. So as a kid, I was always into hair. Like I said, I used to wash my doll's hair in my mom's sink. I used to have different head dolls all the time and think <laughs> I was a hairstylist. And, <laughs> no, seriously. I think I was a hairstylist okay. and cut the hair into different styles. So I was always into hair. And I always knew that I wanted to be rich. I just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. I didn't know which way. I just knew I wanted to be rich on my own. So I, I, I was always self-sufficient. Okay. And being the only child uh, kind of forced me into self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Self-sufficiency, I feel like, is something that a lot of people lack. I don't know if it's, like, not taught or just because they have a whole bunch of siblings. Maybe they don't have it. So having that is definitely something that an entrepreneur needs. But so you wanted to be a lawyer. You went to school for that. What made you switch? Or what? at what point was it like, you know what, that's not for me? I just couldn't fathom the fact of the matter that me having to ask somebody for a vacation. Mm -hmm. I always thought about me traveling the world. I always thought about me just getting up and saying, you know what, I want to go to Miami today. <laughs> you know what, tomorrow I want to yeah. go to Atlanta. So, therefore, the fact of me having to say, you know, I have to put two weeks in and then somebody's gonna approve it or deny it. I couldn't see myself doing that and I feel like the um, COVID the pandemic really pushed me to realize that if you're not self-sufficient in what you do for yourself mm -hmm. then you will always depend on somebody yeah. and I couldn't be dependable I feel like I was too I'm too much of an independent woman mm -hmm. um, or independent female to be depending on a job to make sure I eat or if I don't mm -hmm. eat 
wow that's true even though i feel like it's nothing wrong with you know everybody has their own path if you want to be a doctor lawyer whatever it's okay but being okay and being bold enough to say you know what this ain't for me it, it takes courage and you did it so kind of business is hard for anybody i feel like it's not easy people see the instagram they think it takes two seconds but starting a business young is even more yes. harder so what was your biggest hurdle starting a business at 21 my biggest hurdle was the fact of making money stop me or making money not stop me as a college student i know like it's as any as many know it's hard to come up around money mm -hmm. you're struggling with going to class and you may have a part-time job but it's like it's different obstacles it's midterms it's finals so my main hurdle was having to take the realization of I can't make money stop my, me from pursuing my dreams. How did you get to that point? Because I feel like in college, everybody's talking about, I need money, I need money. And in the beginning of the business, you don't make money. You just keep spending. So how did you be okay with not making money? Well, when I first launched my business, um, I decided that I was going to do everything my own, on my own. I did my own website. I did my own graphics. I was my own. I had 10 different hats at one time. <laughs> so... When I was when I realized that man, I can do my own website, I can do my own graphics and mm -hmm. everything else. I realized that money is not stopping me. It's not about the money. Mm -hmm. It's about the motivation and the person behind yeah. the business. It's kind of like how bad do you really want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Um. So like I said earlier, y'all, she is a CAU alumna. This is where I met my good sis. Okay, we go back like pretty crack. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you went to CAU. CAU is college, so it has its highs, it has its lows. Find a way or make one. Um, yes, so. yes, 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 that is what I live <laughs> How has CAU impacted the businesswoman that you are today? The CAU model, find a way or make one. Like I said, I kind of knew, all I knew was that I had a dream mm -hmm. and I had to make my dream reality. I didn't know how I was going to do it, what I was going to do. I just know I had out had a mission to make my dream a reality mm -hmm. so i knew i had to use my resources my resources at my college campus mm -hmm. making using photoshop at the library yep. talking to other females at my school so i kind of made my school as a hub okay. for my business um running my business most of my business work was done at school mm -hmm. so i had to make sure that if I'm going to be at school for eight hours of the day, mm -hmm. I'm going to use four for classes and four for my business. That's yeah, that's you find a way or make one. You have to literally like live by that. See, you will ingrain that into your head. I don't know anybody who went to Clark who does not live by that model because it's like it's life changing. It teaches you how to really find a way or make one. Yeah, with anything in life. If it's not business, if it's a job, if it's your house, if it's your car, find a way or make one is the way of life. Moving to a new state. Talk about that shaping shaping who you are. I feel like a lot of people don't really leave their hometown. What was that experience being in Atlanta for you? So moving from New York City to Atlanta was a big adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, many people look at New York City as the city that never sleeps. Yeah. And so when I moved to Atlanta, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't have family nowhere in the mm -hmm. radius of Atlanta. So I had to kind of grow up. Yeah. I had to mature myself. I kind of had to mentally prepare myself that I was going to be in another state mm -hmm. alone. So um, I feel like Atlanta has shaped me to be a black entrepreneur. Like mm -hmm. Atlanta really kind of instilled the entrepreneurship in me because i look at atlanta as a african-american mecca mm -hmm. you see so many black businesses blossoming yeah. like in atlanta so it was only right that i said that if they can do it i can do it too mm -hmm. so it kind of atlanta kind of was the person who kind of or the the state that, the place that gave me that push yes y'all hear that get out your home state i promise you it will yes. change you from the yes. inside and out being in the home state is comfortable all your friends doing the same things as you being in atlanta everybody around you is doing something everybody black doing something it's just a different feeling and that might not be atlanta maybe that's i don't know arkansas but just go get out your comfort zone yes. when you're in your comfort zone you'll always do as you're comfortable with. So, let's talk support. I feel like support is something that everybody talks about being an entrepreneur, how they've had different hurdles with friends and family and all of that. In the beginning, starting a business, I know 
you sometimes some people are so outward with telling their, all their friends telling all their family like i'm starting a business and they don't have that support how was that experience for you telling your close circle that you were starting a business were you the first one in your circle were people already doing it like how did that work the first person I picked up and called was my mom. And mm -hmm. when I called her, she thought I was crazy. <laughs> um, she didn't feel as though she was taking me serious. She was telling me that I'm in school and I'm just trying to find a quick way out to make money. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until that I was showing her, like, look, mom, I'm really pushing this. Like, I'm doing a website. I'm doing graphics. I'm staying uh -huh. up late. I'm, do I'm reaching out to people for her mindset to change. Yeah. So I feel as though... When anybody tells anybody that they're going to be an entrepreneur, yeah. it kind of puts them at a little uneasy mm -hmm. because it's a risk. To be entrepreneurs, you're taking a big risk. Yes. You're taking a money, a financial risk. You're taking time, um, a risk of mm -hmm. time. So it's such a big risk that some people are scared of risk. Yeah. And that's what differentiates an entrepreneur and somebody who works a nine to five. And it's okay. Everybody yeah. can't be an entrepreneur. Everybody can't work a nine to five. Yeah. So... I felt as though once I started showing the footwork or the legwork behind yeah. my um, my dream, it became more of a reality to other people. Yes. Uh, I will support you as a friend or a family member after I see you do the work. Everybody want to have a business right now. Like I said, it's 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 trendy to be a business owner. It's trendy yes. to be like a boss. It's trendy to be doing this. But you can tell people who are actually doing it and people who are struggling at doing it. So, be careful when you're doing that. So, who is your ideal Banks Beauty Boutique customer? My ideal Banks Beauty Boutique customer is a boss lady. Okay. And when I say a boss, it doesn't mean that you're an entrepreneur. It doesn't mean that you have your own business. But a boss lady to me is somebody that's about their business. Mm -hmm. Somebody that is in, that either is in a transitioning phase or a actually transitioned from being a child to adulthood. Okay. Um, that's why I call my extensions a luxury hair company. Somebody that cares about how they look. Somebody that that doesn't mind spending four hundred dollars on hair extensions mm -hmm. because they know that this is what they're into. So yep. somebody who kind of shares a love for hair as much as I do. Okay, yes. Uh, if that is you, go shop with her, okay? Stop playing with yourself. <laughs> All right. Piggyback off that, you said it's a boss, and your slogan is unleash your inner boss. But you don't spell boss B-O-S-S. -S. You spell boss B-A-W-S-E. How did you get to the point of saying, I want to be different, and, like, how did you come up with that way of spelling it? I didn't like how the word B-O-S-S -S looked. If okay. you really want to, it was the aesthetics of the word B-A. B O S S. Okay. So I was at first wanted to be a unleash your inner boss. Okay. But I looked at it as B A W S E standing for a boss ass woman succeeding every day. Okay. So I kind of thought of like a slogan, something that an uh, acronym that mm -hmm. that can do that, and that's where boss came about. So a boss ass woman succeeding every day, meaning as no matter what the day is, no mm. matter if it's raining, no matter if it's sunshine, she's going to succeed to her goals at the end of the day. Yes. Unleash that inner boy. Stop playing. Like you said earlier, you relaunched on August 15th was your launch date. What was the hardest part about a relaunch? Because it's different than a launch because you've already, people already know you're, you have a brand. So what was different about the relaunch? <laughs> The difference about the relaunch is I actually had a team this time. Okay. So me having a team this time was very much easier. Okay. Um, the weight was easier. I felt as though I had more guidance mm -hmm. and I felt as though it was it was easier for me to pursue my dreams and make my dreams into reality. Mm -hmm. Because as much as I wanted my dream to be a reality explaining it to somebody else and actually make them creating the vision was even better um i feel as though the hardest part of it was making like using consumers and allowing consumers to take you serious mm -hmm. allowing consumers to say why should i give this company a second try let's get to know the girl behind the business i feel like everybody pushes their business but they don't push the person behind what makes you a boss I feel like what makes me a boss is my motivation and my hard work behind me. Uh -huh. I feel as though I'm very dedicated to what I want. Um, it may take it doesn't like doesn't matter how long it takes me, I'm going mm -hmm. to get the job done. And I feel as though that's a big thing because people always think like it's no time and mm -hmm. I feel as though everybody has a destined time. Mm -hmm. Everybody's time will come. 
just because that you see the next person or the next boss mm -hmm. doing it does not mean that you cannot do it. And me being able to hear a no and still get up and try again. Yes, uh, be persistent. <laughs> um, where do you see yourself and your business in the next five years? Um, well, in the next five years, I plan on having my own beauty shop. Um, and I want it to be kind of a one-stop shop for females. I want it to be a place where females can unleash their inner boss. Yes. Just unwind and just be their self in that setting. Um, also, in the next five years, I also see myself expanding to another state. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, that yes. merged the two yes. together. Yes. All right, so I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram, and y'all did. So, first question says, friends and business. I wanted to start a business with my best friend, but everybody says, don't mix the two. Advice. My advice to that is, you have to know your friend. You have to make sure you and your friend have the same hard work and ability. You guys have to make sure that you're able to work together and not against each other. So, it takes maturity. Oh, yes. 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 Maturity, y'all. Be careful. Um, somebody said, how do you overcome the fear of failing? I want to start a business, but I'm scared. You can't be scared to fail. You cannot be scared to say no. If you're scared to say no, that's not an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm -hmm. That is a worker's mindset. Somebody said, how did you know it was time to relaunch? I felt as though I was holding off my, my dreams. And I felt as though... COVID was the perfect time for me to launch. COVID was the perfect time for me to expand my business. Yes. Um, during COVID, um, there was no commercial. There was no going in stores. A mm -hmm. lot of stores was able were slowing down business. Mm -hmm. So I said, this is the best time for me to launch my small business and be great at it. Yes. Somebody said, who motivates you? I feel myself becoming very lazy. Beauty influencer level, I would say I'm Ming Lee. Okay. She really motivates me. She's kind of the reason what made me say, I'm going to start my own hair company. Mm -hmm. um, just the way she is, she she's the definition of a boss. Like, yes. if I can put a boss and a face, that's who I would use. If I can use her. Yes, we right. love Ming Lee. Don't we? We I do. <laughs> okay. Somebody said, how do you find the right people to work with? There's so many web designers out there. Interview your web designers. Um, mm -hmm. Your web designers are going to be your best friend when you have a, a business. They're the per people who make the aesthetics of your business. Mm -hmm. So you always want to make sure that you and your web designer have a great and clear and concise communication. Mm -hmm. Because without that, it's no business. Yes. Yeah. Interview them. That's so good. Hop on a call. Hop on a con Like, it's so many ways you can get to know that person. I didn't even think about that. Interview them. Um, somebody said, what makes your company different? The experience that you'll get with Shop on Banks Beauty, Beauty Boutique. The experience that you'll get. It's not the average experience. I'm always making sure that my customers are always... Uh, I'm all, no, let them know that I'm always accessible to my customers. Always knows that my boss babes, they can write me or call me at any time. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the luxury hair that you get is not like no other. Yes. Uh, somebody said, can a woman have it all? Yes, why not? Okay. Why not? Okay. Why not? If a man can do it, sure can I. Okay. A woman can have anything a man can do times two. Okay. <laughs> somebody said, do you look at other hair companies for inspiration? If not, where do you get it? Of course, I look at other hair companies for um, inspiration because those hair companies push me to be different. Yeah. Um, everybody gets inspiration from somewhere. Okay. Um, yes, we're all in the same industry. So, yes, we're all may have co be competitors. But I don't look at it. I look at it as somebody to influence me, somebody mm -hmm. who's been in the game longer than me. So, it's not that she's my competitor. I look at it as an influencer, somebody that can help me with my business. Yes. If they got this far, why can't I? You have to use that as inspiration and not like, you know, be comparing and contrasting because that's when you get your feelings hurt. Speaking of that, somebody said, how do you not compare your company to others? I can't help but to compare. That's when you have to personalize your business. Your business has to speak for you or speak for the brand that you're trying to influence. Speak for the audience that you're trying to influence. So that's what differentiates my hair company from another hair company. Uh, somebody said, were you nervous about starting a company in a saturated market? Of course. Um, 
But piggybacking off my last response, you have to find your why. You have to find your individuality. Every hair company is not the same. It's um, When you go down the bread aisle, it's more than 10 things mm. of bread. But that doesn't mean that Wonder Bread and ShopRite yeah. Bread or Wonder Bread and Pedigree, Pedigree Farm mm-hmm. do, do, don't all make money. So you have to know your target market. Yes. You have to know your target audience. That's it, y'all. Because I feel like it's always going to be somebody who did it before you. Like, you're not going to be the first person who ever did it. It's already been done. And if it's called to be for you, you can do it. But if you're going to sit there and compare yourself to all the other people, maybe you need to step back and look at yourself and think, like, okay, am I doing this for the right reason or am I doing it because I want to be like them? So, just be careful. Um, somebody said, is starting a hair company expensive? If so, how much should I save before I launch? I say don't make money stop you from launching. Um... I don't see that it's no specific number okay. because it's a lot of graphic um, designers. It's a lot of companies that offer a lot of things, such as yeah. drop shipping, such as payment plans. Mm-hmm. So don't put a number in front of your business. If that was a mis- if if it was any mistake that I made when I first launched, it was that putting a number in front of my business, saying if I don't get to this number, mm-hmm. I can't start my business. And it's always going to be hiccups in the road, like. Such as things like a pandemic can happen. Yeah. Uh, we're in a pandemic now. But a pandemic can happen and you lose your job. Are you yeah. going to stop your business? Um, so it's kind of don't put your dreams on hold for money. Okay. Somebody said support versus copying. My friends are doing everything that I support do. Support is genuinely giving criticism. Mm-hmm. Whether it's bad or good. So support is somebody saying, hey... I don't think that you did this, but I right, but I think that you did that right. Mm-hmm. Now, copying is not. I don't go for it. Bosses mm-hmm. don't copy. You Bosses have to don't be copy. an individual. Mm-hmm. You have to have your own individuality, and that's what will make you stand out from the rest. Mm-hmm. If you copy, your goods gonna fall by the wayside. You're gonna look like everybody else. So you don't want to ever want to look like everybody else because if you look like everybody else, you would never get the att- attention that you you're looking for. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, you guys, do a quick this or that, and then I'm going to let you go. This or that, coffee or tea? Tea. Morning or night? Night. Light or dark liquor? (laughs) Light liquor. (laughs) Tequila or vodka? Tequila. (laughs) Tequila, me. Hip-hop or R&B? R&B. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Wealth or love? Hmm. <laughs> now that is a very good one. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Everybody always they be like, uh, like no, no, keep it going. You was doing good. <laughs> because in what aspect? You, if talking? God said, which one do you want? I got two apples. You want wealth or do you want love? Which one like, are you picking? Love for inner self <laughs> or love from somebody else? Love from somebody else. Oh, well, forget though. I love myself, and that's all that matters. That's it. That's all. Um, What final thoughts do you have for the people? My final thoughts is just to stay bossy. Just make sure that you always be an individual. You always succeed at your dream. You never stop. Keep pushing. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter if it takes 10 years or 2 years. You keep on pushing. You'll never know the ending result if you quit. Yes, y'all, that is so good. I hope you soaked up all of this. Thank you so much, Brittany, for being here. Like I said, this is my good homegirl, so, you know, we go back like crack. But um, (laughs) thank you so much for being here. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. I feel like your brand is evolving, and you are showing us that you don't have to stop. You can keep going. Don't let anything get in your way. Don't let the money stop you. You can have it all. So thanks so much for being here today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'm going to actually call you later. Okay, girl. <laughs> Bye. All right, you guys, that does it for my talk with Brittany. I hope you learned something because, girl, I know I did. Even though we're friends, I love to hear her story and see how persistent she is in business. It just motivates me to keep on going. But make sure you go shop her Banks Beauty Boutique on Instagram. Her website and everything will be down below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And, girl, check out another <laughs> Girl Boss interview or another one. I have 10 of them. So just keep on watching. Until next time. Bye.